part of this video is in response to Kate who made a comment that hey I'd like to see a longer test to test the batteries and thicker pieces of wood and see how long it would last and so that's the reason I'm bringing this to you. Okay guys this is part two of a uh, review of this Ryobi uh, 40 volt 14 inch chainsaw. I'm going to start off by uh, on this one by we're going to put a fresh brand new blade on this and we're going to run a battery test on some thicker pieces of wood and see how the uh, Ryobi uh, holds up, how the batteries hold up and how much uh, cutting capacity it has using the two batteries that I have that are fully charged. As reviewed last time we'll pull out the wrench and we'll start to work on this guy. So we of course have loosened up the, uh, the nuts, we're going to pull those off. Now I did not clean the saw last time I used it, so it's a little dirty in here. That's why we have our trusty brush. Got a little bit of bar oil leakage going on. Some junk will sweep up afterwards. See some caked up, caked up uh, sawdust in there. Get that all out of there. Okay, and this was the this was the blade that came with the saw. There, so we'll uh, we'll pull that the whole bar off. Grab a paper towel. Now again, I'm just cleaning off the caked on sawdust and from the last time we used it. Okay, there we go. So the part that tightens the chain inside is this little guy right here. And then when you turn this, when you turn the screw right here, this little black screw, plastic screw, it causes this to move up and down here. And that uh, is what tightens the chain. So we got our brand new set of two chains, so we're going to break into that. The right one, we can compare teeth. And the teeth are the same. Got a nice brand new blade. Chainsaw chain, chainsaw blade. And the cutting direction, of course, it does matter which way you mount it. Uh, the teeth have to be taking a bite out of the wood, these little teeth here have to be the part that's taking the bite out of wood. This is the part that controls how deep the bite is. This little piece right here. And then this piece right here, piece right here is the actual, the, the thing that takes the bite. So what we'll do is, we'll put this on and again, I'm always concerned that it fits here at the end of the, the pulley here. That you know, That's where you want it to, to check your fit and make sure that that's doing the, the thing it's supposed to do there and that the teeth are lined up well. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to unscrew the adjusting block. We're going to basically make it looser so it's easier to get the chain to start. So I'm just going to loosen this up a little bit. You can, I don't know if you can see it moving here. It moves very gradually and slowly so you can make very fine adjustments and so that it holds when you uh, when you put it on there. Okay, so we have now our chain on the bar. Got our nuts handy. Got this guy handy. And lay it in the top of the bar like so. And then we're going to put this on here and this around the back here. Okay. 
We've got ourselves a basic start. Push it up flush against the saw. We'll put this guy on now. This needs to go in that hole right there. It's labeled for the adjusting block. So we'll make sure that that lines up. This piece here is designed to go in the hole down here so that that will line up. And it's just a matter of making sure everything lines up and goes home. I'm going to move the bar back and forth. So I had to slide it out that way a little bit to get it to drop in and be able to tighten up. Now I'm going to put these on finger tight just to hold my bar and chain in place. Then I'm going to begin to tighten the chain up and you will see the chain where it's dangling there is going to begin to come up. Bringing it up to the bar. Now this is the part where you don't want to make it too tight or too loose. So I'm going to run it back and forth a little bit. I'm going to do this again. Is what can happen is the bar can move up and down and that can adjust the... As long as it has a little wiggle in it like that, it can actually change the, the tension of the chain. So I'm going to make sure it can move freely with very little friction. It's going to have a little wiggle in it. That's fine because I haven't finished tightening it down yet. And that's about all we need. And as the chain warms up, it'll actually loosen a little bit more. So we might have to make another fine adjustment, which is really easy because all you have to do to adjust it when you're running it is loosen these till they're hand tight and then adjust it on the screw right down here. So real simple when you're running it to go ahead and just loosen these. And if you need to tighten it back up again, if it gets too loose, then just loosen these a little bit, tighten, tighten it back to where it's supposed to be and you're good to go. I want to stress again, uh, safety. Uh, again, this is not an instructional video. This is not designed to teach you how to use a saw. I did not uh, sit here and try to model for you how to, how to cut, how to safely cut, how to do all of those things. Chainsaws are dangerous. They can hurt you. Uh, so you should have a, someone that instructs you in person that cares about you and instructs you in person on how to use a chainsaw properly. Once more, just by way of review, I'm not wearing gloves. I'm not wearing chaps. You can see I've just got my pants on. I don't think I need chaps for uh, this demonstration. I'm going to slide a fresh battery in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I believe that this is poplar over here, and I believe that this is red oak. These were, trees were both cut out of my neighbor's backyard about a month ago. I'm going to check to make sure I've got bar oil coming out. Got good bar oil coming out. Power sounds good and fresh. Got battery number one in here. We're going to see how far she goes. That's one cut on the poplar. Now we're going to do a cut on the red oak.
All right, our first battery is done. Let's uh, let's survey the survey the work completed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 20, 22 cuts, half a cut there. I'm gonna go ahead and try the second battery in case we have a battery anomaly. Checking my bar oil. I'm gonna check that in between batteries. It's looking good. I'm gonna check to make sure I still got some coming out. There it is. We're on our fresh battery here and we're off to the races. I think our second battery just went out. Yep. So let's stack it up. Our two batteries in front. That's with two batteries and that's the number of cuts that was made. And I've got, uh, of course, I took the measurements. Uh, the poplar started off around seven inches across. I forget how big across, how wide across the uh, red oak was, but I took a photo of it. All right, so a few takeaways. Uh, one of them is, wow, uh, you know, you just got to have a couple good batteries. These are 40 amp, uh, or 40 volt rather. These are 40 volt, four amp batteries. Again, you're going to want a couple of those. Uh, one comes with a saw in one package, and then the other one I have came with a, a string trimmer. A Ryobi string trimmer. So they're both identical batteries. Looks like I got about, oh I don't know, somewhere around 40 cuts or so. But you can see how much wood it cuts through and about what it does. And it was enough to cut for, I don't know, close to half an hour. Pretty intense cutting with very few breaks in between. So we're, it's not always apples to apples when you're comparing gas to electric and something like a chainsaw. But for my uses and, and the question as good as gas, there's a, there's a second part of the equation that weighs in. That again is, what is your use case, right? What are you using it for? I'm not going out and lumberjacking all day. I'm not running the saws all day. I have to come out and cut some limbs from time to time, and I'm okay cutting a little while and then letting the batteries recharge. I'm not in a hurry when I go out to do chainsaw work. I don't have a chainsaw for emergency use you know, to do road clearing or things like that. If I did, I'd probably have a gas saw. Uh, and like I said, I've had a gas saw in the, in the past. But here's the beauty about an electric chainsaw. There's no spark plug. Uh, on an electric chainsaw. There's no, uh, there's no air filter to clean. There's no gasoline. All you have to keep on hand is, is chain lube, you know, and you can get that in a, in a gallon jug and it'll last you a long time. It's much less prone to breaking down, you know, to having mechanical issues. I'm not ever concerned that it's going to start. I know when I plug it in, like most electric things, as long as the motor's good and I've got power to it, it's going to run. For sheer uh, dependability and time savings, I'm an advocate of, of an electric saw. This, this saw is super simple and it comes out and does the cutting that I need it to do and then I can go off and, and do another chore while my, while my batteries are recharging. The other thing I can do is I can buy more batteries and yes, they're expensive. What I'm buying there is my ability to work past a half an hour or past an hour of chainsaw work. You know, honestly, it would probably be worth it for me if I had three or four uh, Ryobi tools that all use the same battery, it would probably be worth it if I buy each of those tools that came with a battery that was cross-functional. And that's, of course, the whole purpose behind such things and why these companies are doing this and why a company like Ryobi is doing this. By the way, I don't, Ryobi's not a sponsor as, as of yet. I just wanted to find something that worked for me and pass along that information to you so you have another piece of information that you can use to make the best decision for you. Uh, every time I use a tool like this, I just think about what went into the design and, and creation of this tool. The whole reason that I can have this tool and that I can get it off the shelf as inexpensively as I can with all of its components and all its functionality is due to the efforts of a lot of people. Pa people who are in the factories assembling this, the 
engineers at Ryobi, people in the transportation industry, truck drivers. Uh, so a big thank you to all those people that went into this saw being here. I think you should subscribe and sign up for notifications, the little bell, notification bell, because I'm gonna try to track down some of the engineers that actually designed this particular saw. I would invite you just to be, to be part of it. I'm Wade with Watchin' Wade by Strong Tower Media. Thanks for joining me. And it was probably, I don't know, three feet in diameter. It wasn't humongous, humongous, but it was pretty big. Well, so he hired me to, to cut down these tree limbs that were hanging over this uh, carriage house that was behind this big uh, 19th century, beautiful early 19th century, mid 19th century house. But the trees had grown up over the carriage house and it was built into this hill. And so the trees were on the steep sloping hillside. And I was using a still 007L, which is a, it's a short little saw, it's a little pruning saw, it's a climbing saw. It's, it's made to go up in the trees, at least as, as far as I know, I'm not a professional a chainsaw person. So I went up there and I was cutting this limb that was at the very limits of my reach. And I thought I knew which way the limb was gonna go, but when the saw went through the limb, the limb slid down. I'm kind of telling this uh, story for, on behalf of my uh, granddaughter as well. When the limb came, when I cut through the limb, it just came straight down across my body like this. And I was safety, I had a safety harness on. It was basically just a rope tied at my hips and it went around the tree and, and I had a limb behind me and so it pinned me I had a limb coming down in front of me and a limb behind me and my arms were on either side of the limbs and the, and the saw, which I had strapped to myself, which I had basically say, uh, harnessed to myself, fell down below me and the limb was right here in front of my face. But I pulled the saw up, I, got, I had to put it over my head to crank it and thank goodness it was a dependable good still chainsaw, S-T-I-H-L, great brand of chainsaw. I had to crank it right in front of my face and then because I couldn't reach anywhere else, I just needed to get the weight of the limb off, I had to make the cut in the limb right in front of my face. So again, I was working beyond my capabilities and beyond my experience level and I didn't have anyone with me. That's, that's a risky situation to put yourself in. If you survive such things, then you get a chance to learn from them and then to share them in stories like this and, uh, and try to convey uh, you know, the, the adventuresomeness of life, uh, taking risks, surviving things, um, trying something you haven't tried before and then learning lessons along the way.